Joining us now from Washington, Florida Senator Marco Rubio has introduced a bill that would prevent any such reimbursement. So, Senator, I don't think Harry Reid is going to allow that bill to come up for a vote. What say you? Well, he may not initially, but I think ultimately he'll have to. I mean, the, the idea that the government should be bailing out insurance companies in order to make Obamacare work, that's not something a lot of people are aware of, and I haven't taken a poll on it, but I guarantee you it would be hugely unpopular. The, the notion that we have to take taxpayer dollars to bail out insurance companies in order to make Obamacare work, that alone is testament to why this entire law needs to be repealed. The sooner the better. But I, I agree with you. It'll take some time because uh, Senator Reid and many Democrats have been stubborn about this and continue to be stubborn about the well, reality. They're going to protect the president's flank no matter what. So you're going to have to basically take your cause to the people, which you're doing right. tonight here on The Fact, to put pressure on Reid to put it up. But what is the threshold there? You say, well, if they're not making enough money, it's not spelled out. Is it in the Affordable Health Care Law? No, it isn't. It says that any uh, shortfalls that may happen as a result of, uh, of the law, that they're going to come in and make up for it. And, and according to the rule, the way they've written it, it could be any amount. I mean, they really could just go, you know, pour hundreds of millions of dollars of taxpayer money into these uh, private plans. But you talk about taking it directly to the people. I already see it. The body language on Capitol Hill among many Democrats is very different than it was a month and a half ago, Many different, very different than it was just a they're couple scared. of weeks ago. No doubt they're scared, uh, particularly the ones who have to run for office next year. That's right. Um, no. That's right. But this threshold thing, this insurance thing is interesting because I didn't know this. When did you find out about it? Did you know it before the vote on Obamacare? When did you find out? Well, I wasn't here when they voted on Obamacare, but I can tell you we've been studying it over the last few months because we've heard a lot of outside groups been mentioning it, looking at exactly what it meant because we wanted to be responsible. It is exactly what I just said. And after last Friday, it's the, the likelihood that they're going to have to come in and bail out companies has increased exponentially. Sure. Because a lot of those companies were counting on the people that lost their insurance to be part of their exchanges. So and they're, they're either going to have to charge higher premiums, which goes against the very uh, thing that the law was sold on, or they're going to have to be bailed out by the taxpayers. But but even if they charge higher good. premiums, which most of them will, I mean, right. the, the initial data says that people are holding private insurance. And now, as we reported last night here on Fox News, even in plans uh, paid for partially by their employers, everything's going up because they're not getting the groundswell of people coming in because people can't come in because the machines don't work. But so, if you charge a higher premium, more, less people will be on these plans, meaning you're going to have to charge an even higher premium. You get into what they call that death spiral of these plans. That, that's where this thing that's is where headed. It's There's headed. no doubt about it. Right. Yeah. It's headed toward... There's no doubt about that. And I said this very early on, that the administration will do anything it can to keep this thing floating. And, and now we see that federal dollars could be handed to, given to, you know, private insurance companies if they don't make enough jack. Yeah, and, it's a and, bailout, and just I mean, like the auto bailout and everything else. Right. It's a bailout. Because the administration doesn't care how much deficit it runs up. They don't care. I mean, obviously they don't care. Um, right. That's what they've been doing for five years is running up huge debt. So a little bit more debt thing. to carry Obamacare on the rolls, they're going to do it. But, Bill, here's what makes it worse. This bailout would be every year because these plans don't just need a one-year bailout. They're going to need an ongoing bailout. So this is not unlike the other bailouts. I thought it was that a three-year threshold. Every year for those three years yeah, over a period three of time, it's going to be rolling. I mean, this thing's not going to go away. The, the, the bailouts happened one time. They weren't good, but this one actually is over a period of years. So, again, this is, look, this law cannot be saved. It will have to be repealed. And the question is, how long will it take for Democrats to realize that and cooperate in that endeavor? So far, I think at the upper echelons of the Democratic Party, they're still being very stubborn about it. But my right. prediction is, check back in eight weeks. Now, you have already introduced this bill. Have you yes. talked to Reed? Have you given him a call and said, hey, we need to caucus on this. We need to get this up on and running. Have you? Yeah, I, I haven't. We haven't reached out to him, but I have talked to some other Senate colleagues who are shocked, uh, particularly in the Democratic Party, that are shocked that this provision is in there. They're going to start about it, and I have a feeling I'm going to be getting more phone calls than I'm going to have to be making over the next few days as more people become aware that this is just one more aspect of this law that no one knew about. No, absolutely, you're right. All right, Senator, please keep us posted. We appreciate you.